Local story right now in the raid on Sean Diddy Combs LA residence by federal agents. This is a story that we broke here on Fox 11. Mario Ramirez is outside of his Holmby Hills home right now with the latest developments for us. Good morning to you. Good morning, quiet right now, but it was a chaotic scene with federal agents rushing into the home here behind me. There were two separate raids, one here in this upscale neighborhood, the other in Miami, both connected to a federal sex trafficking investigation. Take a look, Fox 11 was the first to show you the raid here locally, led by Homeland Security, heavily armored federal agents making their way into the home on Mapleton Drive, associated with rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs and his production company, Bad Boy Films. Dozens of agents searched the property for hours hours leaving with boxes of evidence. A similar scene at the Miami Beach property listed in his name as well. The properties raided in connection to a sex trafficking investigation, although Department of Homeland Security officials haven't named Diddy as the focus. The 54-year-old has been at the center of several sexual assault and sex, traffic, uh, sex trafficking allegations in the last year. That's something Variety's executive music editor has been covering extensively. Listen. Been rumors like this for years, for decades, about this kind of behavior from him. Um, I don't know whether they're true or not. Dr. Francis Cress Wilson, greatest African psychiatrist in modern history from this city said, if you don't understand white supremacy, what it is and how it operates, nothing else will make sense to you in this society. The reason why those who are least interested in helping us fix our problem are the most celebrated is because they are the ones that are put out in front of our children to be celebrated. If you were not loyal to black people before you got rich, you definitely will not be loyal to black people after you get rich. But let's go further. During slavery, when a rebellious slave misbehaved, what would they do? They would put him out in front of all the slaves and they would whip him and tar and feather him and lynch him as a message to the others. Every generation, white America, makes a sacrifice of a black celebrity. Look at your entire life. I've been on the planet 45 years. Every generation of my life, every decade, white America finds a celebrity that they put out and destroy them as a reminder to LeBron and Oprah and Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry and everyone else, Jay-Z, Beyonce. Don't forget, you might be a billionaire, but remember who helped you make that money. At the end of the day, y'all got the money, but we got the power. That's why they don't mind signing a $100 million contract. Because everybody in your circle is white. Your agent is white. Your lawyer is white. Your publicist is the white. Your advisor. banker is white. The person selling you the car is white. So do you know what a black celebrity really is? He's a water sprinkler. He's a redistributor of white wealth. Because you can't use that money to help your own people. The reason they don't help us is because the white man has made it clear. Number one, white people will not support black people who are loyal to black folks. You cannot become a popular celebrity in America if you are unapologetic. It's impossible. You must do what? Compromise yourself in the presence of white folk. You must be an acceptable Negro. If you are not an acceptable Negro, they will destroy you. I like LeBron James. And I see he got some black manhood in him, but he's trying to navigate this in his final years because he's concerned about what his public memory and image will be after he retires. Oprah's doing the same thing. You see, they want to help, but they know white folks don't value black people who know they black and want to help black people. That's a crime in America, being loyal to black. You can't be rich and be loyal to black folks because you end up like Johnny Cochran, assassinated, so-called brain aneurysm. They murdered Johnny Cochran because he was investigating how much money America owes black people for slavery. First, he gets OJ off. Then he gets Geronimo Pratt of the Black Panther Party off for free, defended him for free. And then he says, I'm going to go into reparations and find out what America owes black folks. Black folks said, we can't let this Negro come out with no price. White folks said, we can't. They killed him.